on the residue, the last two boxes. The last two boxes uh, like we combine, we combine short run and long run analysis together. Okay, so for your first box and the second box, okay, for your first box and the second box here, you do the short run and the long run analysis separately. Okay, like you on, on the left hand side graph, you only do the short run AS. On the right hand side graph, you do the long run AS. Okay, but uh, the third one, the third box and the, the last box are kind of the more important. Because in the real examination, it, they combine, they usually combine the short run, the long run analysis together. Okay, so let's see. Let's give you the first example, like to combine the long run and the short run analysis together. So this time we only need to have one graph is totally enough. We don't need to do the two X Y plane because we are combining the short run and long run analysis together. Okay, so this is a still is the AICD model. Okay, so we label the horizontal like by still by real GDP. Okay, vertical is a kind of price level. Okay, because uh, I mentioned, okay, this time you just uh, put all the three curves together. Okay, so the vertical one is called the long run as short run as in AD. And uh, it is a it is a better for you guys to add all the labels. Not a better, but a necessary. Okay, it is a necessary to add all the labels. So this one is called the long run is short run is and AD. Okay, and this one can be labeled by potential GDP. We mentioned so many times last week, potential GDP to memorize this. Long run as and the horizontal as the intersection I mean, is it called potential GDP. Okay, also can be called as a long run GDP. Because it has a no relationship with the price level, because only determined by resource and the technology. Okay, so long run as is a vertical curve. Okay, next is uh, okay, what would happen? What happened? Okay, so the first intersection here, we label them, we label this one by E number one. So imagine, imagine the initial kind of a state. The initial stage is the initial environment of this country is E number one. Okay, it's, a, it's at the long run equilibrium one. This is the initial like a starting point. In assumes this is a starting point of our analysis. Okay, and the next step what happened here is about the tax account. So due to what have the reason, okay, we don't need to care about what is the reason to do a tax account, but they're just assuming tax account happened. So tax account happened. So what is a tax account? So all the residents, all the individuals, the business, okay, everybody pay less tax to government. Can somebody tell me what will happen? So which curve kind of we can do some kind of a shifting? Okay, tax happen. So tax can happen here. Which curve I should shift? Now they need to tell me the direction to the left or to the right. Okay, if you don't need to pay as much as a tax you paid before, what will happen? So basically more money. You can have more money left on your hand. You pay less tax, lesser quantity of tax to a government. What will happen? Okay, no response, no response. Okay, it is easy to guess, okay, we should shift AD to right, right? We should shift AD to right. Because what is AD? AD is called aggregate demand, aggregate demand. We just add up everybody's expenditure together. 
all the goods and the services demand about everybody. Do you remember everybody together is called aggregate demand? Because the people pay less quantity of money, less amount of money, less amount of tax to government, so people get more money. Okay, then the next step, the people will do more either consumptions or investment. Okay, so investment, consumption, investment, all these, uh, all these are uh, components of AD. So if a consumption increases, investment decreases, for sure we should shift your AD to the right. Okay, so now you can you can get a E number Q. A new intersection, a new market equilibrium here is called the E number two. And you just compare E number one and E number two, you can easily see how those three important indicators are changing. Like the inflation rate is increasing. Okay, like a GDP is increasing. Okay, the GDP is increasing here. Unemployment, unemployment rate always has an inverse relationship with the GDP. So if the GDP increases, unemployment rate decreases. Okay, so you can feel your question number A. Real GDP increases, that's right. Unemployment rate decreases because once again, inverse relationship and the price level, level based on our graph here is increasing, right? Okay. But next step, next step is super important because at E number two, at E number two, at E number two is a very special case. Why E number two is a very special case? At E number two, the GDP, the current GDP is even higher than potential GDP. You, get, you guys can see this, right? But the current GDP at E number two, the corresponding GDP is here, even higher than potential GDP seems problematic. Because by the definition, by the definition, potential GDP okay, indicates the maximum of the production ability in your country. Assuming you utilize you use up all the resources and the best technology. Okay, assuming using all the resources and the best technology. So under these two conditions, potential GDP represents the maximum, maximum production ability in a country. But now the current GDP is even higher than potential GDP. How that can be happened? How that can be happened? Why, why in short run, we can produce a GDP at a higher level? Mm -hmm. Okay, that could be happening because, because of the reason is because all producers, okay, they are doing something called the overuse. All the producers overuse resources. Okay, the so keyword here is called Overuse. Okay. So what do you mean by overuse? What do you mean by overuse? Okay, for example, for example, so one common resource is used by all the sectors, all kinds of industries is a human resource. It's a human resource. Right? You need as, a, as an employer, if you hire workers, normally, normally the workload. Normally, the workload is eight hours per day. Am I right? Okay, what, what do you mean by workload? Like normally, like regulated by the law or regulated by whatever the regulation. So a worker usually works, usually works at eight hours per day. This is called a norm, normally work, workload as a full-time worker. You work eight hours per day. Okay, but but in some special case, in some special case, as a as I am clear, we can extend their working hours. 
we just ask them to work like 10 hours per day, 12 hours per day. This is a cost overuse. But how that can be happen? How that can be happen? How can you, why, why you can ask them to work like, 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 like uh, over time? By giving them money, right? By giving some economic intensive to extend their working hours. If you are willing to pay higher wage rate, maybe. Okay, some of the, some of the workers may they, they, they may are willing to like, like extend their work hours. This is called kind of overuse. Okay, so by, by, by having this, by seeing this, okay, you can understand E number two, the very, which is a very special case. Why, why is it very special? Because E number two, the corresponding GDP is higher than potential GDP. So first step, you can understand, yeah, this kind of a scenario, this kind of situation can be happen. Could be happen. Could be happen because because of the producers are overusing their resources. Okay, for example, overusing their human resources. Okay, by extending, by sending them to extend their working hours, maybe from eight hours per day to ten hours per day, twelve hours per day. Okay, and then now then the next step you can understand this kind of a short run equilibrium cannot kind of last very long. Okay, so by because now if you want to produce more, produce more, produce more, all the producers they need to pay. Once again, how how you can how how you can ask them to work to to work over time again by giving them more money, by increasing the, the wage rate, for extended working hours. So now you can understand, so naturally you can understand the E number two, or like this all, uh, all normal cases, it cannot be less of a law. Because the producers, because they cannot continuously Increases the wage rate, increases the, like the compensation standard for 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 the extended work hour. Okay, so at E number two, at E number two, E number two already is the highest is is a point where all the producers cannot increase their wage rate anymore. Okay, the so wage rate has been reached to a very high level. Okay, we cannot be beyond that point. So during that point, so this point must be so-called a turning point. So after this point, after, after the compensation has been reached to a very high level, all the producers and access staff, they are reducing, they will reduce the quantity they produce. Okay, what is the reason? What is the reason? They cannot, once again, they cannot increase the wage rate. For more for, for more extended working hours. So, so finally we'll go back to the normal level in terms of GDP by shifting short as to left. Okay, but but the price level will in continuously increase even to a higher level. This is how you analyze it. This is how you analyze it. So why we can shift the short answer to left. And the number B here is super, super important. Okay, when you do the examination, you need to be able to use a full sentence to explain why we can go back from E number two to E number three. How we can go back to the normal level GDP, like a potential GDP. And uh, you need to truly understand why I said E number two cannot be less like a very long. 
Okay, because if you want to maintain this higher level protection, you need to give money, give money, give money, give a lot of money or the compensation wage salary to those workers. Because of those workers, but how you can have this higher level protection level here by asking them to work overtime, by asking them to extend their working hours. Again, and and this kind of situation costs you so much, so much, a lot of cost. Okay. So you shift the short time AS to left to reduce the quantity you produce to go back to the normal level GDP. Okay, but but pay attention to here by shifting short term AS to left. You see the only thing change is, is the price level increases. Because finally, if you compare E number one and E number three, you see real GDP actually remain unchanged. on prime rate remain unchanged, but the general level has been reached to an even higher level. And the final conclusion, what we learned here is that the tax cut has no, has no what? Has no use for what we see. So tax cat has a no, so typo here, I want, so typo here, okay, so, so this is why I want to, so to put a stimulate the economy. Tax cat can, cannot stimulate, stimulate the economy in long run, has no effects on long run economic growth. Tax cut, this is a kind of policy only can temporarily stimulate economy increase overall GDP, but it has no relationship, has no effects on long run economic growth. Right? Because of finally, because of finally we need to shift long run AS to left. So the GDP has been go back to the normal level, but the only thing has been changed is the inflation rate has been increased. And, and what we learned here, what we learned is around kind of as a fundamental reason okay, why in the past COVID pandemic area, like a like recent two years, like a, why the Canadian inflation rate and also in USA, the inflation rate also are high. Okay, the highest level, the highest level GDP is that, well, the highest level inflation rate in the two years was like 8%. It was a very, very crazy, very high inflation rate. So why is this the case? What is the fundamental reason why we had now, now the now the inflation rate is a kind of a decreasing. Okay, but 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 what we had the inflation rate is is was eight percent. It's a very crazy. It's a very high. That means the general price level increases so fast. So what is the reason? What is the fundamental reason? Okay, part of the reason is okay in the in the in the in the during the time of the COVID nineteen, during this great pandemic area, Indian government they use a lot of a lot of a tax cut policy from twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty two. Basically, during simply speaking, loosely speaking, during the pandemic area. People, business, corporations kind of can defer the tax payment. Basically, we, during that two years, we don't need to pay our taxes. And a lot of people also can, in, in the kind of the opposite, we don't, don't need to pay money to government and the government transfers some money to, to the people. The people can more money. So the people can get more money graphically. So if you shift AD to right, okay, if you shift AD to right, you see the price level will increase. Okay, that is the reason okay, recently, recent after COVID-19, we had a very high inflation rate in Canada and in the USA. Okay, last page. 
we can also use the same framework to analyze uh, uh, so-called great depression. So great depression, that is the first major global financial crisis, economic crisis that happened in human being history. Okay, the global, is a global financial crisis. Okay, not only happened in USA. Okay, but this economic crisis affects globally. Okay, so we draw the graph. So this time was so due the starting kind of the the, the the initial state. The initial scenario is the same, assuming the country is at the the first long run intersection here. We label this one by E number one. Why the first global financial crisis happened in 1922? Actually, these this are kind of the historical reasons. Basically, mainly the main reason is due to the fear of the Second World War. So people people was people was forecasting oh the second the great war is coming. Right. So if you are forecasting, if you imagine you, you if you were you was you were forecasting oh another great war is coming. So during that kind of a scenario situation, you don't want to spend any money. You want to save your money. You don't do any investment. You cut down your consumption expenses to save your money. So we shift. So the first step we shift AD to land. By shifting AD to left, you go. You can get E number two, and then you compare E number one and E number two. You can see, you can easily get, okay, what will happen? Like how those three indicators will change during a recession, okay, during bad times, during financial economic crisis. Real GDP decreases, okay, don't, call, don't copy down this right answer, so that's right, this, that's wrong. So you see real GDP decreases and rate increases, the general price level decreases. Okay, basically E number two is a called recession. Okay, E number two is a called recession. E number two also can be called as an abnormal case, very special case, because the GDP now is lower than the potential GDP. Okay, if the current GDP is higher than potential GDP, if a short run does not equal to long run, always remember this: the short run equilibrium kind of you reach to kind of you finally will by some means so by some. Uh, through some kind of a channel, the short run <coughs> GDP will go back to potential GDP. By different ways. Okay, actually from last box, we learned one of the three ways to get go back to the normal level GDP. Actually, what we learned here is called the automatic adjustment. Okay, what do, what what do you mean by automatic adjustment? Automatic auto means no government intervention, no human be behavior, like a, no government. 
I cannot say human behavior, but I must say government behavior here. Okay, no government involved in the in the, in the entire story, right? Okay, but uh, but instead of that, okay, is the price signal in labor market, in resource market, coordinate market participants' behavior? Okay, in order to like kind of make the short term GDP go back to the long run GDP. Okay, this is what do I mean by automatic adjustment? Because currently, let's be more specific. No government. No government intervention. We I never said the government did what 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 I never said that. No government here. How the short term GDP can go back to potential GDP by analyzing once again by analyzing how the price of thing you know, has been changed in resource market. So what we learned from the last from last graph is when the current GDP is higher than potential GDP, when everybody when everybody using or uses the human resources by extending their working hours. And how you extend the working hours by giving them more money. And you know we can as employers as business owners they cannot continuously, continuously increase the wage rate, continuously increase the like money, the, 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 the wage and the salary they have been paid for those, for those uh, overtime, like it's extended working hours. Okay, and the, so, so when the price in labor market reached, has been reached a very high level, the next step, the next step of the producers are we reduce the quantity they, 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 they want to produce, right? So so we can shift the short term asset to left. Okay, very similar story. Okay, same kind of method. So how we can analyze it? So how this graph, how this short term GDP can go back to potential GDP. Same story, but just the different kind of a directional. So the answer is the here, right? You just use a full sentence. So just to make sure you can use a full sentence to explain the whole story again. We say opposite direction. Okay, that is what you need to do here. So let's see. The explanation is when the current GDP, like year number two, is lower than the potential GDP, what happened in resource market and labor market. Unemployed resources and like unemployed workers. Now the decrease so this one should be increase. Typo here. Unemployed resources increases. Okay, so the price of resources it decreases. So then when the labor price, when the wage, when the labor price equilibrium wage has been reached to a very low level. So in that kind of situation, other producers are willing to produce more. So shifting short run answer to right. So finally, I shift the short run answer to right to go back to, in order to go back to normal level GDP. Okay, once again, the overall process Okay, the third box, the third graph, and the last about and, and the and the graph is just finished. This too is a very important, important, important question. Can be tested by the by the real examination. Okay, and this too is called automatic adjustment. And the one common feature is that by so far, by far, we didn't mention anything about a government, you see? No government policy. We didn't mention government did anything to shift the short term answer to left, to, to shift the short term answer to right. Instead of a government behavior, instead of a government intervention. Okay, the driving force for shifting short-term answer to left, to either to left, to either to right, 
is the price change in resource market. Once again, isn't the government behavior. Okay, so these two graphs is called automatic adjustment. Automatic one more time. Means we don't have a government automation. Okay, so let's see. Let's do a practical question. In this document, you get two sets of a paper in the year of 19, 2019. Okay, now everybody, let's try, let's try number A and number B. Okay, the country's name is called Canada. And now I give you guys like 10 minutes, okay, to do A and B. Especially, I want to see you guys. I want to check you guys how you answer B number one. Yeah, basically, we just talk about, we just discussed how we can adjust the short run GDP if it does not equal long run GDP. How Z adjust short run GDP back to the long run, back to the normal level of GDP, back to the potential GDP. I gave you guys maybe five minutes or 10 minutes. Like you should try to find a piece of a paper and try to organize a full sentence, okay, to explain B number one.
Okay, let me show you guys how we can answer uh, question A and question B. So the country's name is in Canada. And by the, by the question, you can get the information is Canada now is in a recession, is in a recession around output. So basically the question here just it tells you the last graph we did in our lecture notes. And it's a testing, it's a testing you about the like the great recession case, great recession graph. So how you can answer, how you can do number A is super easy. You just copy down the graph you did in the last box of your lecture notes. So let's do this again. So first step into a, to build an ASD model, you need to have an XY plane here. So you just label the horizontal line once again by real GDP. Vertical axis here is the top price level. And then you, and then you can have a three graphs, uh, three curves, not the three graphs. So make sure the current GDP is lower than the potential GDP. Okay, potential GDP is the intersection of a long run AS and a horizontal line. You label this one by YF. So now, oh, you need to follow the requirement. The requirements of that the question, you label the current GDP by Y number one. Okay, so now I guess you, oh, you need to add those labels. Okay, long, long AS, short, long AS, and A, B. To make everything clear, maybe you can also add a title for this graph, and this is the Canada. Okay, and this is the Canada. Okay, by having this graph, three curves, and all those labels, you can finish your question number A. Okay, question number B, the central banking later in next week, I guess, we will talk about the central bank, who is the kind of central bank. And the government do not take any policy. So really the key word, the really is the key word is a no government intervention. So do not take any policy actions means there is a no government intervention in this graph. And how this economy can go back to the potential GDP. Okay, so B number one. So today we just we just finished, we just learned. Okay, we need to analyze this, like how the resource price has been changed. Okay, really the driving force make the short term GDP go back to potential GDP here, given no government intervention is the that. So we need to see how the resource price has been changed. So you can see when current GDP, like your Y number one, okay, in this graph is the color Y number one. When current GDP is lower, because you can see the Y number one is on the left hand side of Y, so it's a lower. It's a lower than YF is called the potential GDP. Is lower than YF. Okay. What happened in labor market? In labor market, unemployed, unemployed laborers increased. Okay, so labor price. So labor price, so resource of price, so labor's wage decreases. In such a situation, 
in such a situation, okay, producers will increase their production. So finally, graphically, so really can shift in short radius to the right. Okay, this is how you explain. Once again, every time when you see, you need to explain something. That means you need to write down some uh, one or two sentences. You do need to write down a long paragraph, but you need to really have a full sentences. One or two full sentences to explain, like why you can shift your long answer to write. Uh, this is my explanation. And finally, to finish B number two, which is a finish of the final step here as shifting short answer to round. Okay, so the short run economy can be adjusted, can go back to the normal level. Okay, once again, by you can add an arrow here by shifting short answer to right. Okay, to have this intersection. Okay. Okay, then we finish. So we may have them finish. I need to copy down the place to copy down the the simple ones that I did here. Okay, then we go to move on to notes number three. So notes number three, we will talk about a noting for being the economy. We will just because the normal wage include prices will decrease because in the short run term shifts it to right until the review. That's right. Noted, yeah, that's right. Okay. So the next step, let's move on to notes number three. Notes number three, we will talk about something called a physical policy. So why, so in notes number two, in the last box, in the, we just finished the question. What we learned from the question, oh, by analyzing how the research price, just like you said here, by analyzing how the wage rate will change in resource market, the short-term GDP will go back to, will be adjusted back to the normal GDP. And once again, the whole thing here, the whole thing you guys did here is called the automatic adjustment. Yeah, by having all this, all this, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you did very well here. By having all these things, okay, short-term GDP can go back to the normal GDP. Okay, but but we haven't discussed one important thing is how long the recovery process will take. Right? Timing, like time is so important. What about if the recovery process will take like 10 years or 20 years, maybe 30 years? Nobody, nobody can can, can tell us or oh, because the overall recovery process will take like three years to five years. 
So, so let's imagine a situation. If the recovery process will take long, will take a long time, and will take a long time. Let's say 10 years, 20 years. Okay, so 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 we cannot just wait here as a government, right? As a BC government, as a Canada government, as a US government. We as a government, we cannot just sit here and wait for the overall economy, for the overall economy go back to the normal level by by by, by itself. So sometimes we just cannot wait, cause cause during recession, right? People suffered, yeah. People suffered greatly from a recession. You see, a lot of people lost their job. They cannot make any money. Okay, all the business, small business, big corporations shut down. They are during recession, right? They go to bankruptcy. And, and the layer of labor, and the residents of Canadians they cannot make any money. The demand is 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 a shift to is a shifting to left because of, because of the overall investment consumption decreases. So really really bad situation. So people can 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 suffer suffer greatly from recession. So as a government, we just cannot wait here and see, yeah. So, 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 so we can use something called a physical policy. Like we need to do something. We want to add government intervention into our question, into our model. And the first way we need to learn is called a physical policy. Physical policy is a can, the kind of a can speed up the recovery process. Okay, if the automatic adjustment takes a very long time. So we cannot, once again, we cannot just wait, okay, we need to do something to speed up the recovery process. So basically in later chapters, we will learn two different kinds of policy can speed up the recovery process. In those number three, we will focus more on so-called physical policy. And the next week we will do monetary policy. Okay, two kind of thing we can do to speed up the recovery process. And uh, now we briefly discuss what is the difference between physical and monetary policy. The first thing is a physical policy must be done by government. Different kind of policy done by different kind of people. Physical policy must be done by government, okay? So if you see the key word, if you see any question tell you about oh, government do something, government should blah, blah, blah. Okay, then the question is about physical policy. Then instead of that, if you see the key word is a card of, is a card of what? Is a card of central bank? Okay, this type of question is about monetary policy. Okay, different people, basically government, central bank, different kind of people, they, they can do, they can implement different kinds of a policy, okay? Physical policy done by government, monetary policy done by central bank. As a government, two things you can change, okay? The first one, you can change the general tax rate. Tax rate, you guys, I guess you guys know, you, you guys know what is a tax, right? So, 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 so in real life, we need to pay this so many different types of kinds of tax to government. So if you consume, if you do consumption, if you're a consumer, you need to pay sales tax. Like in Vancouver, we need to pay totally 12% of the amount you consume today as a sales tax to both the BC government and Canadian federal government. Because GST, PST together is a 12%. And like every time when you spend your money to pay tax, it's called kind of sales tax. If you only if you only house apartment or with any kind of real estate, you need to pay property tax annually to government. Right? You if you are a wage earner in the future, if you found your own job, you make money every month, you need to pay personal income tax to the government. Right? We paid so many different kinds of a tax. 
taxes into government. And as a tax rate, tax rate, how much money into a pay? That's your tax really depends on the government. And so the government can change the tax rate. Okay, can change the tax rate. They can either increase the tax rate and lower the tax rate. In AP level class, we don't need to specify what a specific tax you are paying. We just kind of discuss a general average tax rate. Okay, we don't need to distinguish, we don't need to specify what particular tax we are, we are discussing about. But we are discussing, instead of that, we are discussing the overall tax rate, general the tax rate level. And then another thing government for sure can change is their own expenditure, the so-called government spending. Because it can be because of the government expenditure. Right, government, these, there are three different level of governments, right? So governmental sector, they spend a lot of, a lot of, a lot of money every year. Maybe to build a new sanitary station, maybe to pay money for, for those public, public services sector. Right, BC government, they need to fund, they need to transfer money to maybe public universities like UBC, like U of T. They need to transfer money to VGA, it's our healthy care system. They need to transfer money to Vancouver Place Department, VPD, to fund all of these public services. All this money together is called governmental spending. And it, if we talk about the US government, they buy a lot of weapons for US Army. You see government spend a lot of, a lot of money, right? How much money they want to spend? You're really, really, really determined by government themselves. Yeah, so as a government, naturally, you can, you can change, you can adjust something called the governmental spending. Okay, but next week, when we do monetary policy, we will see how the central bank, how the banking industry can change something called the money supply. Okay, money supply kind of is the total value of the money being circulated, in circulation, being used within Canada financial market. Okay, but at this moment, this week, okay, we will do physical policy. So let's move on. So what is a physical policy? Okay, let me show you how you can use a so-called exhibitionary physical policy to quickly fix a recessionary gap, to quickly close the recessionary gap. So we can speed up. Why is that quickly? So you can speed up the recovery process to make the overall economy back to the normal level. So let's, let's draw a, once again, let's say the recessionary gap graph. And this is Canada. And once again, now you have a recession on the gap due to lower level AD. Okay, this is called a YF again, because this is an intersection of a long row AS and the horizontal line. And the Y number one is called a current GDP. So current GDP is lower than YF. You see the differences here, so you see the big gap here between Y number one and YF. Okay, that means your overall GDP has been lower. It's abnormal. It's a lower than the, it's a kind of a lower than the, than the GDP you should have in your country. So this one is called recessionary gap. Okay, we call this a recessionary gap. And the recessionary gap, once again, is a bad thing because, once again, at this point, okay, the GDP kind of is very low and the rate is very high. Okay, so it's a very, very bad situation. So how we can fix this one? How we can close this recessionary gap by using expenditure? By, by, by what? By using government expenditure? By using physical policy, sorry. 
So you can do two things. We mentioned as a government, you can change two different things, two little things, tax rate and the government spending. Okay, so so how you can how you can so you are government now you are government you are Canadian federal government, right? You can determine right because of the future there's a future of our economy pretty much is on your head. You need to consider how you can change how you can use your two box to make the short run GDP back to the normal level GDP. And we mentioned the two particular tools you can use is the tax rate and government spending. And then you need to make the decision about how you can change, like you need to make a directional decision. So naturally, you now you should lower the tax and the increase the government spending. It is a super easy to understand like why you need to lower the tax rate. If you lower the personal income tax rate, if you lower the sales tax rate, if you lower the property tax rate, okay, if you do tax a cat, so residents, Canadians, they can have more money left on their hand because they don't need to pay as much as the taxes as they, they need to pay before, before you do tax cutting. So when people get more money, oh, we can accept that, oh, they will spend more money. That is the reason why you cut tax. Okay, the left, the left, the, 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 the second approach here, because the government is spending, because the government is spending, government expenditure is one of those four components of AD. You know, number two, we learned AD kind of just like a GDP. So GDP equals to, uh, what, what is the expenditure formula again? GDP equals to C plus I plus G plus net tax protein. You see, government spending is a part of the GDP. Government spending itself is a part of the GDP. So if you increase the government spending, GDP for sure will increase. Okay, now I guess you can understand okay, why we lower the tax, why we increase the government spending. Okay, so put them together. Overall speaking, in this graph, okay, we can shift AD to right. So if the consumption, investment, and the government spending can increase, so graphically we just shift AD to right. Okay, so so this graph is a kind of is a totally different from the last graph we learned. Last graph, we shift the short run as a to right by analyzing how the resource price has been changing in resource market. But here, you know, it's number three. You know, it's number three. Instead of a shift short run as a to right, this time we shift the AD to right. Because now you are kind of a control AD. Okay, by shifting AD to right, oh, we can go back to the normal level GDP. Okay, the good thing about this policy is we don't need to wait so like a long time. As a government, for example, you if you, 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 you if you want to increase the government spending, you maybe you just build a new sky train station. So the so the GDP will increase immediately. Okay, when you finish the construction project, kind of is a way more faster. Okay, don't need to wait. Okay, you 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 you, you now you can you can do something to speed up the recovery process. This is a good effect, good side of a fiscal policy. But don't forget, every kind of economic policy has a positive side and also has an active side. The good thing is that you don't need to wait, okay, it's a way more faster way 
to 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 go back to the normal level GDP. Did you guys see anything bad? What is the negative facts? So the negative facts is so compare E number one to E number two here. You see, if you increase the gram to spending right, if you shift eighty to right, the inflation rate will increase. That is the negative set, negative effect of this policy. Okay, and this and this policy is called the expansionary. Okay, what do I mean by expansionary? Expansionary means okay, the policy is used to increase GDP. If you want to expand your GDP, you use the expansionary policy. Okay, that's it. And one more term to you know is called the physical deficit. Yeah, physical deficit. So what, what, what do you mean by physical deficit? Physical deficit refers to a situation in which as a government, your expenditure is even greater than the tax revenue. And this could be happened. Most of the cases could be happened during a recessionary time and if you want to use the expansion of fiscal policy. So how this can be happened? So we mentioned in real life, we mentioned so many different types of uh, taxes here, right? So in real life, how government again collect the tax revenue, we mentioned. So if you do consumption, you pay sales and tax. If you want to build your own business, if you run your own bubble tea store, you're going to pay like a business tax. Right, but having this example, you can understand oh, how much tax revenues can earned by government, if we can use this word by earned by government, has a positive relationship with the overall economy, has a, I mean, the overall the economic activity level. More consumptions, more sales tax, more investment, more business tax. But during recessionary time, we mentioned consumption decreases, investment decreases. Like the overall economic activity is declining. So during such a time, during such a period, people pay less tax. Or we can say government, their tax revenue also is declining. But based on our theory here, based on the Ever what we learned here is the government they need to increase the growth to spending. So that is a problem. That is a problem of facing now is that as a government, your tax revenue has been has been decreasing. How you can how you can increase the growth of spending? You don't have money, but you need to spend more money. How that can be happened? So the answer is about borrowing. Okay, so as a government, you can borrow money from a financial market. Okay, but at this moment, we will discuss, okay, we will, I will, we will discuss how the government borrowing really can affect the financial market. Okay, but perhaps we will discuss this uh, topic in next week, but at this moment, at this point of time, okay, just um, just remember this term, okay? What do you mean by physical deficit? Just a refer to a situation, like as a government, you can, your expenditure, your spending, even greater than tax revenue. And the reason why we had this is the tax revenue has been lowered during recession time. But based on our fiscal policy theory, okay, as a government, you should increase the government spending. Okay, so the gap between these two values is a kind of physical deficit. And after this first example, I guess the second example is way more easier to understand. What about if you have a so-called overheating economy? Overheating economy means now the short-run GDP is on the right-hand side of the potential GDP. And in those number two, we already discussed 
this could be happen. This could be happen because all the producers they are already use their resources, extend like a working hours, blah, blah blah blah. So the current GDP is higher than the potential GDP. And we could call this graph as an overheating economy. So during this overheating economy, the major challenge faced by your country is the inflation rate is too hot. The general price level is too hot. So how you can fix and we call this now Y number one is on the right hand side of YF and we call this as an inflation or a gap. Inflationary, inflationary, yeah. Okay, we call this inflation or gap. Some people see, some of you may think, oh, the current GDP is higher than potential GDP, so we have a higher level GDP, so that is a good thing. Actually, not really, right? Not really. So GDP is higher. So GDP is higher, but don't forget your price level already is too high. Okay, so, the, so now we want to kind of cooling down the general price level a little bit. We don't, we don't infuse that for macroeconomic, macroeconomics, okay? We don't solely pursue a higher level GDP. We never do this. We don't solely pursue a higher level GDP. Recall that the policy goals of the macroeconomic policy is at the same time, at the same time you want to promote the GDP, that's right, and that's, but, but into, at the same time you need to keep the inflation rate like under 2%, I mean the end in terms of the annual rate. You need to do this two things at the same time. Okay, we don't solely, we never said this, we don't solely pursue a higher level GDP. Don't forget at the same time you need to keep the inflation rate low. Okay, make sure the residents, the people in your country is afford to buy those things, whatever they need. Okay, but currently you see, currently the problem, the major challenge is here. The inflation rate is so high. And how you can fix this problem here, how you can like close this inflation gap, how you can lower the inflation rate. So just as the opposite way, right? You still adjust the tax and the ground suspending, but this one is uh, this time it just uh, change them with the opposite way. Now you should increase the tax rate. And you should lower the, your own spending because you are government, so lower the government expenditure here. So graphically, so we can shift 80 to right, 80 to left. Okay, if you shift 80 to left, if you shift 80 to left, oh, so, so the high inflation rate has been lower here. Okay, but don't forget what I just said is the every cost of policy has the positive side, has the negative effects. So what is the cost of, what is the negative effects of the kind of policy? So the inflation rate is increasing. No, no, no. The unemployment rate is increasing because you are lowering the GDP. Because you, you are closing this, uh, Inflation began. Okay, so at the main time, okay, the unemployment rate will increase a little bit. Yeah, that's it. This is the kind of physical policy. Once again, you need to tell the difference between notes number two and notes number three. But, but so, so far, we learned two different ways, right? Two different ways. 
regarding how that was again, short run GDP go back to potential GDP. He knows number two by analyzing the resource, how the resource crisis has been changed. You can go back to the, by shifting short run as either to right or to left. You can go back to the normal level GDP. But the drawback of this kind of, a, of your notes number two, the draw to the drawback of the automatic adjustment is maybe the, the adjustment process takes a very long time. And if we don't need to, we don't want to wait, we use a physical policy. The good side of physical policy is you can speed up the recovery process. Okay, but the negative side, you are facing kind of a trade-off between the employment rate and the inflation rate. And what we learned from this two graph is that, for example, in this graph, you see, you lower the inflation rate, the employment rate will increase. In the last graph, you, you lower the employment rate, the inflation rate will increase. We kind of, we, you need to pay a price for adjusting for adjusting the overall economy in a quicker way. The so next topic, when you figure out, when you calculate so-called multiplayer for physical policy. So what do you mean by multiplayer effect of a physical policy? So when do you calculate what is the quantitative relationship between, for example, increase the government spending and the GDP. We already learned, okay, so far we already learned, we already understand, okay, if we increase the government spending, if we increase the government spending, GDP will increase. We just have learned about this, right? But we haven't discussed it once, we haven't asked you guys, what is the kind of a quantitative relationship between these two variables? between these two values. Okay, what do I mean by quantity relationship? If I ask you guys, okay, if a government, if a Canadian government increase the ground to spending by one more dollar, does the GDP also increase just by one more dollar? If not, the GDP will increase by how much? That is our question here. So what is the quantitative relationship between these two change? Let's repeat again. For stimulate the overall economy, what we mentioned, what we learned, okay, government, Canadian government need to use expansion, expansion of the policy. For example, increase the government to spending. Okay, and we, if we specify the amount they are kind of they are increasing in terms of government spending. For example, the amount is one more dollar. Does the GDP also increase by one more dollar? That is our question. So question mark here. How much a dollar in terms of the GDP will increase due to one dollar increase in government spending? So first step you to understand, okay, the question mark here, like it's more than one dollar. It's more than one dollar. Okay, the reason is here. The reason is here. Usually, in practical, in real world, in real life, increase the government spending usually has a magnified effect on overall GDP. Magnified effect. So why? Why is the case? Because the increase of government spending really can engender, really can engender further more spending done by household sector and the business sector. Okay, if a government basically, basically, if a government spends more money, okay, to follow that, kind of to follow that, okay. Residents like household sectors and the business sector also will spend more money if the government increases their government expenditure. So let's have an example here. So now in BC, what would happen? The re really the real thing. What happening right now in in Vancouver is that they are building new sky train station. Did you did you guys ever heard about this? 
Right. So the BC, BC government, they are extending the extending the, the, the sky train line to UBC. Basically, they are building new sky train stations. But you guys let me for you, you guys must know this, okay? Around the new scheduling, around those scheduling stations, usually those high risk residential buildings are located around the scheduling station. So if we build a new scheduling station, blah, 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 corona, what, what, what will happen? Yeah, maybe those, those are builders, yeah, those are real estate developers. What is the building? Yeah, maybe the view like a build like a more high risk residential buildings along this uh, extended sky train line. You see, by building this, uh, by, by, by building, by, by developing these buildings, the investment will increase. Right, because it's also builders, yeah, from their point of view, if they build the high risk residential buildings, uh, build a lot of apartments, yeah, because the people prefer to live this apartment, like be uh, closer to, to a scheduling station. Right, so, so, so the investment will increase yeah, by, 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 by building this uh, high, high uh, apartment. Okay, so, so if they build this apartment, what will happen next is that? So people in so Vancouver, people living in Vancouver will buy those apartments. So consumption will increase. Consumption also will increase, you see? Okay, but the money spent by building these sketching stations is called government spending. You see, governmental spending happened here, then can engender, next step can engender furthermore investment here and consumptions here. Okay, so governmental spending, increase governmental spending can engender furthermore spending. Okay, this is a usually happened in real life. So now you can understand, okay, GDP will increase more than one dollars. More than one dollars. So the next step, naturally you want to ask. So how big? How big is the question mark here? Okay, how big is the question mark? Really depends on one more term. Is it called MPC and MPS? So let's first step. Let's define what is MPC. Marginal propensity to consume. For short, it can be called as MPC. And the MPC is about how much to consume out of an extra dollar income. So let's have an example here. So if every time you can increase your income by one dollar, if you can make one extra dollar, averagely speaking, you spend 80 cents more. So that means your MPC equals to 0 0.8. You just use a 0 0.8 divided by $1 is a card. So you get 0 0.8. Okay, you will consume 80% of your extra income. So this is a percentage, okay, it's a card MPC. If you spend 80 cents more, that means you save 20 cents out of your uh, one more dollar extra training code. So for sure MPC equals to one minus MPC. And you don't need to worry about how to calculate MPC because the MPC will be given by the question. The question will give you guys the number. will tell you guys how big is the MPC. So you really to use this number 0 0.8. Okay, once again, let's repeat again how you interpret, how you understand what is a card 0 
That means people in Vancouver, when they can make one more extra dollar income, they will increase their spending, increase their consumption by 80% of this one more dollar extra income. So that is 80 cents. Okay, and if people spend 80 cents, that means okay, people see 20% of their once, once again one more dollar extra income. So MPC equals to one minus MP, MPS, sorry. MPS equals one minus MPC. Okay, this is our second step. Is the third step using this phone member? You need to understand, you need to kind of memorize this formula. This is called one divided by one minus MPC. You can calculate something called the expenditure multiplier. So let's say do example. So you still using 0 0.8 as your MPC. So one divided by one minus MPC. So you can get five. So five here is called the expenditure multiplier. So what do I mean by five here? What do I mean by expenditure multiplier here? Super easy. If government increase the government spending by one more dollar, the overall GDP will increase by five dollar, and the five times larger. Five times larger, and this is a five is a card expenditure multiplier, and calculated by this formula, and the MPC will given by the question. So don't worry about how you can calculate MPC. You don't need to calculate MPC. MPC will be given by the question. Okay, so why is the case? Okay, how come the overall GDP will increase by five times larger? So using our SkyTrain station example, let's, let's explain again. So to stimulate this economy, based on our theory, fiscal policy, government should increase government spending. Even in real life, okay, government spend their money on upgrading infrastructures. This is usually what government do. For spending their money. Yeah, you're lazy, easy, easy, easy. Build something. Sky train stations, maybe a new gym, maybe a new park for people living in your country. Okay, you're lazy, easy, easy are upgrading the infrastructure. This is a euro way how government spend their money. So let's see, they are building a new sky train station by spending $20 billion. Okay. So to build a new scheduling station, let's assume BC government spend $20 billion here. Okay, by finishing this construction, okay, Canadian GDP will increase by $20 billion. But this is but this isn't the end of the story, okay? Economics really is about exchange, okay? So I mean, if a government spend $20 billion, that, so my next question, who made this $20 billion? If someone spend $20 billion, that means that means in same macroeconomic, in same economic system, okay, somebody made this $20 billion spend by government. Spent by government. So who made this $20 billion? So those are people, those are businesses who contributed production factors, resources to this construction project. Am I right? Okay, those are workers, those are those are, those are, those are workers, those are maybe a company who designed this uh, new sketching station. Everybody who involved in this overall projection. No, 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 not a projection. Who involved in this production process, who involved in this construction project can make money. And the total income generated by this project is $20 billion. Okay, so once again, if the government spend $20 billion, that means a lot of people made $20 billion from this new sketching station. And the next step, assuming MPC equals 0.8. That means those people who made $20 billion, 
will spend 80% of this billion dollars for purchasing, for consuming, for purchasing, for purchasing whatever they want. So they will spend the second in the second round, like in step two, those people who made $10 billion will spend $16 billion. And then let's repeat the process one more time. Same question. If someone, if all those people like spend $6 billion, who made that means? More and more people, the next group of people can make $16 billion. Depends on where they spend their money, right? If if they use a twenty billion dollars to purchase a bubble tea, so the bubble tea store can make sixteen billion dollars. Yeah, if they go to Costco, Costco can make this six billion dollars. Okay, but 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 regard but but we don't care who made the sixteen billion dollars. But someone will make sixteen billion dollars. And then let's repeat this process one more time. Okay, the guy, those people who made the sixteen billion dollars, will you will do next round of a consumption. Still, eighty percent of sixteen billion dollars is a twelve point eight billion dollars, and we just repeat the process over and over and over again. And finally, if we add up all the numbers, okay, all the numbers, including the first twenty billion dollars spent by government, spent by government. And all those new stimulated like more consumption activities, we just add up all these numbers together. Finally, finally, the increase in overall GDP will close to one hundred billion dollars. And you can easily see the quantitative relationship between twenty and hundred here is five times larger. And once again, we call this five times larger is called multiplayer. Is called the expenditure multiplier. And the next time, you don't need to list a table, make a table like this. Instead of making this table, you can directly, once again, use the formula to calculate if you know the MPC. And for sure, you will know the MPC. MPC will be given by the question. You just plug in the MPC. The number into this formula, you can easily calculate all the expenditure multiplier is a file here. Okay, and you just do the 20, make the first round expenditure done by government times the five, then you can calculate, oh, the overall GDP will increase about $100 billion. Okay, and this is a kind of multiplier effect. Okay, but besides increase of government spending, we mentioned another thing, another way to stimulate economy. As a government, you can change another thing so called the tax. You can change the tax rate. So same kind of a question, same kind of a question. If we cut down tax by totally by one dollar, because I'm talking about the cut down the tax. So tax lower by one dollar. We already learned is a GDP, right, if you cut tax, GDP will increase. So same kind of a question. If we cut the tax by one dollar here, so how big is the question mark? Is the GDP will increase by how many? By increase how, um, how much money? Okay, we cut the tax, so it's a negative number. GDP will increase, so question mark, before question mark, it should be a positive number. But what is the kind of a quantitative relationship between these two figures? Okay, to understand this question, you need to understand this. So if we cut the tax, actually we have discussed, if we cut the tax, that means, okay, people's income in your country increases. 
I guess you can understand this, right? If we cut a tax, so people have more money left on their own hands. Yeah, that means your personal income increases. Okay, let's assume, let's assume because of the, the number here I use, we use is $20 billion. So let's, let's do a comparison. So if, okay, if BC government can't tax the totally also by $20 billion, and you understand that means the people's, all the people in Vancouver, kind of cut a tax, means as if people can make $20 billion more. So in the first round, okay, people will spend 80%, still MPC is the same number, MPC is 80%. So that, mean, that's, that means people in round number one will spend $16 billion. And five times larger, times five, so family got 80. So GDP will increase by this number, $80, $80. And what is the quantitative relationship between the 20 and 80, you see four times larger. And the four times larger is called a tax multiplier. And is this a tax multiplier still can use some kind of formula, as you can see here, to directly calculate how big is the tax multiplier. You just use the MPC divided by MPS. So if MPC equals 0 0.8, that means MPC equals 1, MPS equals 1 minus MPC, that is a 0 0.2. So 0 0.8 over 0 0.2. So it's a four times larger. Okay, how you can in terms is uh, interpret for here. You lower the tax, you cut tax by one dollar overall GDP will increase by four dollars. You cut tax by one dollar overall GDP will increase by four dollars. And the final step, if you do the comparison between these two calculations we did here. So what you can discover is given same level MPC, we never change our MPC through the overall story. MPC always is 0 0.8. Okay, given same level MPC 0 0.8, you see the government expenditure is a five. Tax, no, no, no. Expenditure multiplier, not expenditure. Expenditure multiplier is a five times larger but the tax multiplier is four times larger. So you can get this conclusion is compared with the cutting down the tax, increase the government expenditure kind of some more powerful. If you spend one more dollar, GDP will increase by $5. But if you lower the tax, lower the tax by $1, GDP will increase by only about $4. So it's a more powerful because the five is bigger than four. Okay, I guess this is all the things you need to know for three points, right? For this set, for this part. And let's do a simple question. So let's go back to our Tuesday nineteen paper. So let's continue. Let's move on to the question number three. Still, this is a Canada one. Okay, Canada. This is a question. We just finished A and B. So now let's do number C. So now you can see how uh, how they calculate how they test. You guess about this. They give you guys a five minutes. You can we see five minutes you should. Okay, see you just do late a bit the calculation.
Now the first step, you need to calculate how big actually is the recessionary gap. Because of the normal level GDP, potential GDP, long run GDP, full employment level GDP, whatever the term you want to use, is uh, this much, 540. But uh, currently, your overall GDP is just 500. So first step, you need to calculate how big is the recessionary gap. And this is step super easy equals to $40 billion. So you want to increase your GDP by $40 billion. This is our goal here by implementing a physical policy. And C number one, if you increase the governmental spending, if you want to increase the governmental spending, so how much dollar you need to spend more as a government? We mentioned governmental spending has a magnified effect. So it's a kind of multiplier effect on overall GDP. If you want to increase the GDP by 40, you don't need to exactly spend 40 more dollars as a government. Because you have a kind of a magnif magnified like power. Okay, so I guess the first step is to calculate how big is the multiplier effect. So you just use the formula one divided by one minus MPC. So MPC, as we mentioned, we were given by the question is a one, so still so is 0 0.8. Same as we did in our question also, so one divided by one, divided by one minus 0 0.8, five times larger. So how we do the third step? Increase governmental spending by one dollar GDP. We increase it by five dollars. Oh, and by the way, multiplier is a unit of free number. Don't need to have any kind of a unit for five here. Okay, just a unit free. So just a five times larger. So naturally, you do forty divided by five. You got eight billion dollars, okay? You only need to spend $8 billion and five times the larger so you can increase the GDP by 40. You don't need to increase, like spend $40 or more. You don't need to do that. You only need to spend like $8 billion to increase the GDP by 40. So this is a C number one. C number two, if you lower the tax, cut down the tax, and you know this time we need to calculate another multiplier. You cannot use a five here. You need to calculate another multiplier. It's called the tax multiplier. And based on the lecture notes, the formula is MPC divided by MPS. And if the MPC is 0 0.8 and the MPS should be like one minus is 0 0.8 is 0 0.2. So it's a four times larger. Okay, and the, this is a step number one. Step number two. So 40 divided by four is a 10 billion dollars. Okay, so $10 billion. Okay, but uh, to closely, to be careful here, and to really follow the all kind of requirements raised by the question. Because the question asks you guys, you need to specify the amount and also the direction of the change. So this one is, this part is very important. So you also need to specify the direct, cause you are kind of making a directional, if I can say this, a directional decision. You need to specify how you change, like increase or decrease, both your, both your regarding your expenditure, government expenditure and the tax. So this one, you should specify, oh, we should increase the ground spending by $8 billion, but what about this one? You should specify, oh, we here we should decrease the tax upon a ten billion dollars. Okay, you need to specify once again the amount 
of your other adjustment and the direction of your other adjustment. Okay, amount and the direction. And the amount and the direction. It is better to have a full sentence, okay, to have a full sentence to explain, finally to explain. Okay, we want to increase the golden spending by $8 billion, and we want to cut down the tax by $10 billion. And once again, and once again, what, one thing we can learn here is the government spending to increase, to change the government expenditure, kind of is more powerful. Okay, so too more powerful. So if you choose to increase the government spending, you only increase the government spending by $10 billion. You spend it, no, $8 billion. But if you want to cut down the tax, your tax revenue will decrease by $10 billion. Okay, so this is uh, for this week. And the homework we could do is in another set of the 2019 paper. So we did the Canada case. And the second set of the paper, form B of 2019, the country's name is called the internet. And same thing, I guess now you can finish A. To see, I guess. Yeah, so this week the homework is 2019 from B. And we did the Canada case. So, in another case, you could do the color of plan. And the same thing, you can finish A, B, C, and for question C, including number one, number two, number three. Okay, that's it. Um, work. Yeah, very, very similar. Okay, for question A, you just do the graph. Yeah, for question B, you just analyze, okay, how the short run GDP can go back to the potential GDP. But now you need to be careful. So, so the, regarding the way, right? We, we, we now we learn two different ways to do that adjustment. The first one is called automatic adjustment. Basic, basically, it's about loss number two. Another way is called the fiscal policy, basically, about the number three. And the number C, the kind of a duty comparison between loss number two and the loss number three. What, what, what has all the different consequences we can get? if you use it different ways to do the adjustment. Okay, but no questions, see you guys next week. And I remember to finish the homework.